Coming up this week on Archer's Choice. This week on The Archer's Choice, it's Ducks and Bucks in North Dakota. You don't want to miss this week's show. Well, this week on The Archer's Choice is unbelievable. We're going back for ducks and bucks, baby. You betcha, North Dakota, the Brant Brothers, Double, Double B, B Outfitters. One of our favorite places to go in the fall. Absolutely. I think we have a, it's, it's just locked into GPS for that, you know, October 19th around that period. It's just, we're heading north to the Brants. Yeah, and this week we also, we, when we were up there, we had Delta Waterfowl join us. What a great organization. And yeah. I mean, you talk about trying to teach everybody conservation, duck and waterfowl management, but not only waterfowl, but everything. Well, I think they tried to help us learn how to duck hunt. And I don't they, know that it helped us any. I, I think they realize that we are a lost cause. I think we're helpless. Um, yeah. This week's lucky logo? Is Beeman's, baby. That's right. And the lucky person that finds that Beeman logo is also going to get an Icon Arch Choice Range Finder. Oh, and some other goodies from yes. Mountain Mikes and LVE. So okay. they're yeah. cleaning up. Well, we've got lots of bucks and duck footage to show you this week. So we need to get going. We should start off with my, my hunt. hunt. With my hunt. I, well, we don't want to give it away, but we just need to start off with my hunt. It's short and sweet. Double B Outfitters. It's one of our favorite places to go white to hunting in the fall. We know when we go out there, we're going to see David and John and Su Susie, and we know we're going to have a great time and see a lot of great deer. This is the first year in many that we didn't take our son RJ with us, and wouldn't you know it, the first evening out, 45 minutes into the hunt, this beautiful buck comes walking in. <laughs> okay, well, go get my buck. So we stand over here, and my yeah. arrow, where? Oh, look at that. That looks pretty, doesn't it? Perfect. I mean, I know it's pink fletching and all, but that's just added a little more color to it. That's all. Just added a little bit more color to it. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> oh, look at him. <laughs> oh, and he didn't go anywhere. Thank you, guys. Great shot. Johnny, thank you so much. Oh, look at him. He's pretty. He is beautiful. Yes, he is. Look at that. Perfect shot. Look at him. Good mass, nice time. Yes. Good, good mass. It's a beautiful buck. 
Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Ducks and Bucks up at Double B Outfitters. And David and John go, I know where they're going. Oh, look at this. Look at this. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Huh? Well, welcome back to the Archer's Choice. You know, it was Vicky's turn, as usual, for the first night out. And well, first night, the Vixen spoke hey, and the Vixen did it. Another good double B buck. A great buck. That's right. And 140s. You your did turn? good. It's about time. I guess so. What do you mean you guess so? Well, you take so long sometimes, you know? Gee whiz. Perfection takes time. Oh, geez, Ralph. Would you get busy? I'm going to try Just, again, okay? <laughs> No, we were we were seeing deer all over, and they were coming in, and and I mean the crazy thing was we, you know, we spotted this big, we spotted a few mature bucks, and they were staying up on the high side. And when we got back to camp, you know, we told the guys, and David and John go, I know where they're going. I'm like, well, do we have a do we have a stand there? They said, when the wind is right, we're going in there. Well, I think it was two nights later, the wind was right. To watch that buck, you know, that, that beaming and the spitfire went right where we needed it. To watch him run around the hedgerow go j and just drop and, man, I, I think we all know what that feeling's like. It's like, oh, thank you, Lord, and just, woo. Hi, how are you doing? Congrats. <sighs> okay, he was right there. Okay. I shot him and he ran that way. And normally we'd follow blood, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. But, <sighs> bump, bump. He came, they came right down the road. Yeah. Oh, look at this. There he is. Look at this. Wow. Double B, baby. Yeah. Look at this buck. Beautiful. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> look at the points on him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, right? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 points. <laughs> Oh, <clears throat> oh, oh boy. Wow. He's a seven. Good job. Good job bro. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> and as usual, when you got the chance, you got her done. <sighs> he's a yeah, he's a he's a good boy. Oh. He's a six by seven. Oh, he's beautiful. Look at the the main. Look at this. What is it? Bladed. He's bladed. Seven. 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 Seven by six. <laughs> big deer, oh, too. He's beautiful. Yeah, he is. He's a big body. He's a dandy. Oh, his neck is all. Do you want to shut these legs off? Yeah. I think you're fine. Yeah, yeah he looks right. <clears throat> Good job, bro. Thank Great. you, guys. Great, Great job. job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we're still ducking and going after the big bucks in North Dakota with Double V. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Good job. Thank you. Wow, it, you saw a lot of deer over there. Oh man, we were covered up with deer. No doubt about yes, it. Yes, picket well, fence buck. Pick what, are you, what are you doing? Stop, stop. I was going to shoot another one. We're going to go into waterfowl, but I was going to shoot another pigeon. Put the bow down. Put the hoit down, honey. Why? <laughs> we're going with Delta. We're going waterfowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. This is where we're going. Hey. This is for Joe's license for Canada next year. <laughs> that works. Yep, 
actually we should open this up here actually it's a so you have an eight foot pipe here base pipe that's what goes in first you use the post pounder and then from there you have a smaller diameter square tubing that you simply just slide into the other pole it's really easy and it's something you do have to maintain every year and that's the fun of it too going out there every year checking it out taking a look at if it was used or not okay what you what you're looking for when you go out and check them every year is uh, remnants of a bowl so the mallards will go in and, and if they actually don't make a nest, sometimes they'll even prospect and they'll make a bull. Then you look for down feathers, whether she actually used a nest or egg fragments. We keep records of all of our hen houses and they send us that data and we use it to find out where, the, where they're most responsive, where they're most used. I'll tell you what was awesome is to share the experience and to learn more about Delta Waterfowl with Joel and Carly there. And Carly being another woman hunter, her and Vicky just bonded and it was so awesome to see that they both have the, the love and the passion and the drive and, and you know, Joel and I are sitting back because we said, well, you know, girls, maybe it'd be better you to walk out in that swamp because you have the waders and, you know, and put up the, the waterfowl nest, the duck nest. And then we're sitting there going as they're walking out, sinking all the way up to, you know, up to here. We're like, yeah, this is cool, man. I like this. Yeah. I dig it. Just so you know, we had our concerns about that water being over Ralph's head. That's why Carly and I offered to go into that water and get that nest put up. <laughs> That is great. That is great. It was such an honor and a pleasure to share camp with, with you know, with Delta Waterfowl. They taught us not only about the organization as a whole but how much they're so concerned about not only the, the habitat and the restoration, but the future of the waterfowl and the hunting. They are so big in, in getting the youth and the women and bringing the families to understand and respect and enjoy the waterfowl hunting that it just, I mean, how cool is that? To have an organization that is not just dedicated to just one part of it, but the whole realm. They're looking at the bigger picture and to look at that bigger picture in today's world, is truly a plus with any organization. Boom, baby. Yeah! Any organization out there that's really into securing our hunting heritage and our hunting futures. That's something that I'm very interested in and Delta Waterfowl is one of those organizations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. Time for this week's Bow Hunting World Magazine Tip of the Week. Did you know the average hunter's getting older, not younger? Ouch. <laughs> and that's why the popularity of ladder stands and ground blinds has taken off. The reality of it is ground blind hunting is fairly new, even though we used brush piles years and years ago. The thing now with the ground blinds, people need to be aware of a few certain points. One is, when you take your blind and you have a solid flat surface and you put that blind into that hedgerow, that cornfield or whatever, just like this, and here's your shooting, your hunting area. The problem is most of these animals, they see that and it's totally out of character for that area. It's a big flat surface, most of it reflects light, it doesn't move, all the leaves and limbs are moving around it, and this isn't. It makes them nervous. It takes them a lot more time to get acclimated to that situation. What we've done is we took our design, or we took the blinds, and we gave it more of like a three-dimensional look, like a ghillie type of system with the top and the sides. When the wind blows, so does that. It absorbs light rather than reflects it, and it creates shadows inside. The big advantage of that is it's more natural and it looks truly like foliage that's out there. The other tip is turn around and don't put your blind out like this if this is your hunting area and keep that flat surface. Tuck it like this, shoot out, the, shoot out right on the corners, tuck this blind back in, keep trying to keep this point 
away from the edge and you'd be amazed at how just tucking into that in at an angle will help you to blend in more and make those animals more relaxed in a shorter period of time. That is your tip of the week. Well, it's my last night in North Dakota, so this is it for us. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Okay, now. Did you notice? Yeah, what'd you do with the Benelli? Put the Benelli down, it's time to bow hunt again. Okay, well now, Tommy G. Big Tommy G from Cabela's. That's right, Tommy Gallagher, and he is up. Now, last year he passed on a really big, big heavy eye guard. Eye guard buck yeah, that, beautiful buck. So now. All we, his friends and relatives are saying, everyone, why did you pass him up? Yeah, so now this year we gotta see what's he gonna do? Is he gonna pass? Is he gonna shoot? What's it gonna be? Tommy G. Come on, let's see what What's happens. It's gonna be Tommy G. <laughs> well, it's my last night in North Dakota. We're back in a blind that we hunted several nights ago. The wind's good tonight. We had several deer come in. We just didn't have any shooter bucks. So this is it for us. So we're gonna hang in here. We've got perfect wind. We're in here early and we're gonna stay here until the right last shooting light and see what happens. It's the last night, Tom. What do you think? You gonna hold out? Are you gonna go ahead and shoot something this year? We're all just kind of wondering. We're waiting back at camp, waiting to find out what you're doing. already got to him. The coyotes already got to him. We shot him an hour ago, maybe an hour and 15 minutes ago. That's how quick those coyotes got on him. That is amazing. I've never recovered a deer that quickly and already have had the coyotes on him. I've never shot a deer with this kind of brow tines before. You know what, Joe? Everybody made comments about last year's show where I passed up that buck and they all commented about the brow tines. I think it was just destined that we would come back to double B and with Brent's help get this buck with those double brow tines. Isn't that great? The brow tines on this are just amazing. My granddaughter watched that show with me. She asked, she asked her grandmother, why didn't grandpa not shoot that deer? <laughs> well, she won't get to ask that this year. I'm sure when we were trailing the blood back here, they were chewing on it. They were chewing on it. We couldn't, we can't be 40 yards. And that's amazing how long they hung in there. They got his whole rear end chewed out. They got his tail completely ripped off. Listen. They're close. We interrupted their supper. Yep, we broke into their good times here. Way to be, Tommy G. He got it, huh? But boy, yeah. those coyotes. They got on them fast. Holy cow. Really fast. We want to thank Delta Waterfowl. Absolutely. What a great organization. You need to support them. That's right. And we also want to thank Double B Outfitters, David and John, Susie, all them guys up there. You guys rock if you saw the Lucky logo this week. Beeman's baby. 
Log on to Archer'sChoice.com, click on the lucky logo button, fill out the information. Someone's going to win some great stuff from Beeman, an Archer's Choice Nikon Ranger Finder, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Like, you're cleaning up. And now, next week's show, you don't want to miss it, because we are going back up to MRA, McMillan River Adventures, for Moose Mania, baby. And this year was unbelievable. Yeah, wait till you see it. It's pretty cool. So we want to thank you for watching this week's Archer's Choice. See you next week, same time. Same channel. Right here. On the Archer's Choice. Yeah.